So I am just going to read a few, a few little short pieces and then um, conclude with my piece from the tour. Uh, I wrote these today, so they're clearly still a work in progress, but I like to keep it lively like that. So, A lost whale has been drifting nightly closer and closer to land. A robot has been somnambulant. Though powered down, it scoots downtown. Though suppressed, its digital video recorder keeps rolling. A family is torn apart by their lost pet. The signs say, responds well to a calm approach, missing since December, sighted in this neighborhood last week. Once we have established his patterns, we will be able to set humane traps. A woman is losing her voice. She feels no one can hear her. She hasn't spoken in three days, and no one has shown any indication of noticing, save for her cell phone carrier. They sent her a message, like to text, unlimit yourself for only $9.99 a month. Craving the myth below the life, a man walks his invisible dog for hours through this city, stopping wherever the dog wants to sniff, rest, or eliminate. Tilting her head in the direction of his dangling leash, an old lady asks, Where's your dog? We're lost, replies the man. <laughs> now I'll read a couple pieces from my book, Artifacts, uh, the cover of which was also done by George. <laughs> thank you, thank you, George. Unfortunately, due to a glitch on my part, uh, we don't have copies here tonight. But, um, but you can purchase them online at watchwordpress.org. And um, please check it out if you're interested. Um, what it is, I guess I should tell you what it is, is it's a series of numbered pieces which I typed on 3x5 index cards with my, um, my manual typewriter. And they're only linked by the fact that I wrote them with the typewriter. <laughs> this is number 13. Spiders are weary of being objects of fear. Good girls are tired of being good, and bad ones long to simply rest their heads upon a shoulder without implication. Black cats wonder why you cross the street, and ladders wish to fall on the next poor sap who crosses the street to avoid walking beneath one. The word fuck wants to be held lovingly on the tongue, is tired of the way it is always spat. Birds wish they could swim, and stars are sick of being wished upon. Bottles fear being emptied. Words are buckling under the burden of meaning. Silence is only a theory. Everyone, everything, is tired. Is there an invisible dog in the book? <laughs> <laughs> it's not so invisible. Hi, buddy. It's okay. It's okay. It'll be a short reading. This is, uh, <laughs> this, let's see, I'm going to jump forward and then back. This is number 83. At the Natural History Museum, you can see great skeletal mammoths and taxidermied bears with teeth the size of your whole head. I meant hand. In the dim back room, there is a wall of shelves lined with glass jars. Floating in formaldehyde are vast aquatic insects and fetal pigs, shrunken heads and tangles of human intestines. On the wall are skulls of prehistoric men, skulls of wild dogs and monkeys and small whales. In the middle of this room, in a long glass case, is a fossilized whale's penis. An old married couple shuffles through the room, arm in arm. Dust fluffs up from the carpet with each of their steps. They peer into the jars. They compare the skulls to their own, feeling the contours of each other's heads. They stop in front of the glass case in the center of the room. When she realizes what she's looking at, the woman chuckles. Her husband leans close to her ear. Imagine that, he says. <laughs> You know, I'm going to go to the piece from the tour now. 
so my ship was, as Laura said, the Apollo. Um, actually, it doesn't need a preface. <laughs> Do you remember the rigging? The song of wind through the sails of a great ship finds its counterpoint running through the trees of a forest. There were all sorts of music. The men on the ship sang. Their songs were jolly and bound by rhyme, made to stave off loneliness and desire or the kind of homesickness that masquerades as hunger. They gave up the ship. Her journey ended in the San Francisco Bay, but it didn't really end there, nor did it begin when her lines were cast loose in New York. They gave up the ship, but she went on. They felled her masts, leveled her decks. She became a tenement, a flop house, a saloon. She drifted up and down the long dock and the men dove in to chase after her cargo of spirits. From dry land, the ladies laughed. If they chased that gold the way they chased drink, they'd be millionaires by Monday, said one to another. What remains? Beams, charred and decomposing. What remains? This edifice to human wealth and success. The roots of any tree are as vast as the spread of its branches. The soil line might be a mirror. Look up to know the amplitude of what is beneath you. A rotting shrine under concrete and rebar, cemented over, piped through, relaxed and alive, intimately connected in the way only dead things can be. When you're sleeping, you understand. When you wake without evident cause, unsure of your surroundings and yourself. You wake in the night, and the cabin reeks with the scent of eighty-some-odd men, and the cabin hums with their snoring, and a whale calls out to the snoring men, and some of them are roused, and some of them are drinking, and some are pretending to be asleep, recalling the faces of their wives and children, and somewhere their wives and children are sleeping, and one of their children is dreaming of a whale, and the whale drifts ever closer to this strange song she's never heard before, which bellows from this uncanny creature, swimming at the surface with a long, rigid fin extending from her belly, this creature with a multiple voice and a new energy wringing the water from her. The whale might hear this creature has 82 heartbeats, each distinct, and all of them hewn into a single percussion. Where do the dead go? If an animal dies and its body composts and is taken up into a tree, and if the tree is chopped down and made into a ship, and if this ship is converted and lived in, burned and covered over by layers of sturdy urban landscape, where then is she? Apollo shines golden in the treetops. The orange windows overhead are empty eyes. Windows reflecting back into windows. Windows inside which move people and their abundant and various desires. Press your feet to the pavement. Press your hand against your chest wall. See the weeds pressing up between the buildings and the sidewalks. Lean into the wind and press on. Thank you. Woo!